this is part two of our video going down the Snake River on June 1st, 2022. See what kind of interesting things we find. I, I do see a wind, a very large wind farm in front of us. Um, off to the south a little bit. I'm assuming that's, uh, it's actually we're heading due south right now. So south and a little east. And if you didn't watch part one, we are traveling from Clarkston, Washington to the Wenatchee area of Washington, uh, moving this helicopter for cherry season. And so we decided to do a scenic route and although the light isn't particularly good, I think we're hopefully going to get some good video. Hopefully the cameras will work. Hopefully we'll see something interesting. And the reason I'm not flying lower, a couple of reasons. Um, number one reason is that I'm flying over water and I need to be within gliding distance of land. And if I fly closer to the water, then I'm not going to be within gliding distance of land. So that's the reason number one. And then reason number two is that we were, until very recently, flying inside of a canyon. And the problem with that is that um, they tend to run wires between two sides of a canyon, so the wires could theoretically go kind of low. Which way are we supposed to go here? Straight, I would think, right? This is just another river coming in. I'm hoping. Oh, be terrible if we took the wrong river, wound up in Montana or something. Um, yeah, it's just like a little creek over there, I think. This is the, uh, oh, it's just like a little gully right there, it just ends. I don't know the name of this bridge because I'm not looking at a map. We're just winging it, we're following the river. Can't get lost following the river. Bump definitely wants to come out. Ah, oh, nice to see the way lights hitting the hills over there. That looks kind of pretty. Now that the river is kind of wide, I don't think I need to fly quite so high. If I stay close to one shore or the other. This area, as you can see, is pretty remote. Let's fly over the top of this. Looks like sand dunes almost up here, huh? Yeah, it looks like sand dunes. Huh. So people who are watching, if you are interested in the, uh, the um, geography of the area. I highly recommend uh, watching uh, Nick Zentner's videos, Nick, Nick on the Rocks. And then if you want to see geology and helicopters with Nick Zentner, then I highly recommend Nick Over the Rocks, uh, where Nick climbs on board into my helicopter and we go for a ride uh, to talk about the geology of the area closer to where I live. And it was a lot of fun. And Nick Zentner is a big guy. I, he almost didn't fit in the helicopter, he was so big. And we had a lot of fun chatting about uh, the different things. It was, uh, a lot of people like it, so if you like geology, give it a try. This is on this, I'll take this on. Don't need it to be, uh, it's in camera mode right now. Get that back up, Let's see where we are. I really don't like not knowing where we are.
Yeah, I have a special knee board that'll hold this to my knee, so I don't have to balance it like this. You know, for this kind of flying, it's not a big deal. Especially, well, normally if I had nobody sitting next to me, I would just sit in the seat next to me uh, if it was loose, but I prefer to have it secured. We actually came pretty far. We're about halfway to Pasco already. This is good. About 20 minutes. Yeah, I'd say 20, 20 to 30 minutes. Most, it's a lot straighter now, the park that we're on. We're out of the canyons. Interesting, all these logs. They probably There's really a lot of logs on that side of the river. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of it looks like lumber to me. It could be, it could be um, a barge dropped the load. There's a big piece right there floating. Oh. There's another runway over there. Now this is another dam we're coming up on. I think what threw me on that last dam was the fact that the lock was in the middle of the dam and I don't wasn't expecting to see it in the middle. I was expecting to see it on one side or the other. Right. Let's see where this one is. There's no there's no boat. Looks like it's on this side. It does. The other one did too though, but I think it, this one definitely is. And the mouth of it looks really narrow. Or maybe that's a boat park. I think that's a barge park there. I wonder if he's waiting to go down or if he's just parked there for the night. Or if he just came up. Uh, the lock's all the way empty. Yep. Oh, there's a boat in it. You see the boat in there? Oh, no, no, no. That's an illusion from the uh, little building on the side. Right. That's wow. It. It's really empty. Oh, there's a fish ladder has squirrelies in it. Or maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's just another bypass. So the dams here have, on the Columbia River, uh, and Snake River, this is the Snake River. Uh, there's a barge coming up. It looks like it's working hard. Or am I imagining things? No, it looks like he's working hard going upstream. Yeah. The uh, dams have uh, what they call fish ladders. A fish ladder is a way for the fish to get upstream. Salmon especially, uh, they breed where they spawn. So if a fish's egg hatched, you know, 50 miles up the river, then the fish, when it's ready to spawn, to, to mate and, and lay eggs or whatever, um, it's going to want to go the same place. So the only way to get up there then would be to go past the dams, and you can't jump over a dam. So what they do is um, they put fish ladders in, which are basically stepped waterways. And the fish can jump up them. Looks like what? I don't know. Sawdust almost in that one. The other two look empty. corners. You can see the tracks on the side of the hills created by the cattle walking around, walking in line. Yep. Cattle ranches out here.
There's another bridge. We are actually just north of Starbuck. Starbuck would be south of us there. Wait, I don't think it would be within view. Road turns and goes up. Yeah. Awesome. That's uh. Did we pass that bridge earlier? That high trestle? And then we went on this, the lower one? Yes, I think you're right. We'll have to see if the road comes back in. Because, oh yeah. Um, I, re I remember these tracks. I remember I was telling you that I thought that road on the side, that uh, level pathway looked like it was a train track. You could see where it used to come off. Yeah. And there's, that's where it crossed over behind us. Flying into the sun. Not good. Wires under us. There's the towers. We're clear, way clear of the towers. There are the wires. So this must be the Palouse River. Whoa, a little, uh, little turbulence right there. It would take us up there to see the falls, but it's too far. I think it's too far. Well, I think we came down that road there, under this thing. That's it. Everything we are now will be stay south of our route. Lincoln, I think. Yep. <laughs> this looks man-made here, this little cutout, huh? Oh, definitely. Wonder what that was for. Maybe they used to offload boats or something there. That's a wildlife water catchment system. You see those that metal thing there? Can you see it? No. They have those all over Arizona. It's a wildlife water catchment system, not a wildlife catchment system. They're not catching wildlife, they're catching water. little buttes here. It's going to take a turn to the south here. Up a little, a little ahead. I 
See the B boxes down there? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if those are bee boxes out there or wrapped something. They look a lot like bee boxes, don't they? Yeah, they do. On pallets, yeah. They could be. Come back from uh, California. Plenty of cattle down here. You know, there's the home, there's a lot of houses down there, ranches and whatnot. They're pretty, they're really spread far apart. It reminds me of a really a lot like Arizona, except in Arizona, obviously, it'd be a lot drier, a lot less green. But there's a lot of places out, you know, be, I don't know how to even describe it. S Central small, Arizona. Small settlements. Yeah, but not even, they're not even, they're just like remote ranches, you yeah. know? And it's even more remote out by, uh, like on the Navajo Reservation, or, yeah. Let's see if I know which dam this one is. They're not saying anything about the dam names. We should be coming up to Ice Harbor. Another reason why you don't want to fly really close to uh, a dam, for example, other than the fact that the government doesn't like it, but besides that, is that um, these dams all generate power. So since they generate power, they've got power lines coming away from them. And that's another really good reason to avoid them. So we're seeing the lock over here on the left. I'm just going to go over the dam itself. Should be able to see the lock in the camera. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, power generating. Yeah, the substation. Oh, there's another boat. Must have just come out. Like he's going down. Yeah. That's oh, a great that's old just trestle. A trestle startled me. <laughs> yeah, it's just very. It's dead. Looks like there it's been stopped too. Here, Maria. I see him. Uh, that's a great old trestle, though. Well, the light's getting good now. 
We're actually moving in the right direction for it. Another trestle there. And another one. It's very good. Another one down there. There's just one after another. Very cool. was probably like a tunnel in there. You see it? Yes. That was probably um, a railroad also. Yeah, because it goes up to the trestle. There's the other one down below. Very cool. And there's one on the other side that looks like it still might be active. Wow. That's really cool seeing all these different trestles where the tracks used to be and the cutouts where they used to be down below and up here oh well, now we're getting up to the orchard land Gives you an idea of how difficult it was to put the railroad across the country. Yeah, look, there's another tunnel there. Yeah, well, I mean, the, and the fact that they have it in two layers. It looks like this is paved over. Oh, it looks like it's paved over. Uh, maybe it was at one time gravel, at least. That yeah, could be the ballast, too. The old telegraph lines next to it. Probably a ton of insulators down there. Let's see what my Pasco frequencies are. One, five. Huh. Interesting the way they built like these dams or whatever instead of a bridge some places. I wonder what makes them decide how they're going to do it. It probably has a lot to do with how much water flows through. Pretty close to Pasco.
spots, orchards here. They were coming up on where I used to fly for that that client of mine years ago. I don't think this is it. I think I think it's that one over there. But I used to obviously approach from the other side, so it was a big orchard. see if I could find it. It had uh, two palms and one of them was, one of them had some issues. So I had to make a lot of flights down here. I was, you know, taking various inspectors and um, pump guys. And I don't think that's it. which is the automated terminal uh, information system airport, for a Tri-Cities airport, uh, which we're going to go through their space. Actually, we don't have to go through their space, but I do want to go to the confluence. So we will go through their space. Well, that's where I used to land, right in there. I guess that's the pond that had the problems. It's all different from this angle. about 12 miles to the east. Uh, we'd like to transition your airspace along the Snake River to the Columbia and then up the Columbia uh, and beyond. Airport Group on Alpha, cross from Wedge Reserve. Uh. Thanks, Michael. Helicopter. Early Tri-Cities Tower, Tri-Cities Alpha, 2987, transition approved. Thank you. Uh. Can you turn that knob? That one, yeah. Just turn it. You'll try turning it one way, and I'll tell you if it's the right way. Nope, the other way. All right, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's about it. That's a new altimeter setting. So um, the pressure, as the pressure changes, our altitude. I mean, our altitude doesn't change, but the altimeter changes. And when you're close to an airport, it's good to have the correct altimeter setting because uh, they'll. Uh, They'll tell you about traffic at certain altitudes, and, you know, or they'll sometimes they'll restrict you to an altitude, stay out or below uh, 1,600 or whatever. So this must be the Ice Harbor Dam. 
but you'd be the probably the first damn Humvee snake going up river. So how many dams would it be? Four total? I think four. Was including this? Yeah. I think including this is the fourth, or is it the fifth? I have to look. So now I'm getting more into familiar area, although I've never flown, I don't recall ever flying over right here. I did fly to that orchard back there, um, straight though from Wenatchee. That's a nice little marina over here. I guess there are worse places to have a boat, right? You could go pretty far. And the locks on this side. Airport 2, Roger. Doesn't look like they use this in a while. Look at all the garbage accumulated, the wood and stuff. That makes for a dangerous situation on a lock. And they're really tall locks. Put your mic by your mouth so I can hear you. Really cool fish ladder on this. Oh yeah. So we're coming out to uh, the Columbia shortly. You can see, you probably can't see, but we can see, looking down to the left, you can see where it continues around. Uh, Tri-Cities Airport is kind of out that way to us. We probably won't see it. We actually won't get even that close. But we will go through their airspace, which is why I call them. Uh, Tri-Cities Airport is a class Delta Airport, so you're required to make radio communication with them. Something to know, in case you're flying around the class Delta. I could have avoided talking to them by simply flying around their airspace, not going through it instead of, uh, instead of going through it like I am. These orchards on the side uh, that have um, Netting on the top and netting on the sides, uh, they are probably cherry orchards, and they use that netting to keep the birds out. And they put that netting away. After they pick the cherries, they'll, they'll roll up all that netting for the season, and they'll roll it out again next year. Ooh. Quite a glare coming off the river here. So the reason they call it Chai Cities is because there are three cities. It is uh, Pasco, which is I think the first one we get to, um, Richland, and my brain is saying Kirkland. Oh, Kennewick, Kennewick, Kennewick began with a K. Um, and they are at this river intersection. They got a draw, is that a drawbridge over there? It looks like a drawbridge. That one, the second bridge. It sure does. Huh. I don't see towers. So at this point, as soon as we get out to the river, we're going to make a right hand turn and then we're going to go direct back to Wenatchee. Perfect. 
We're gonna see if it's raining up that way. That's a drawbridge over there too, so it's one here, one there. And there's some really tall towers here, which means that there are some really high power lines. So this is the confluence. This is the confluence. Columbia. Yep. So this uh, is the Columbia. Now this is the end of the snake. And the reason these towers are so tall is they have to give the river clearance. You know, the wires have to clear the river. Uh, for tallish boats that go through, because there you can still get a boat up this way. So if we made a left instead of a right, we would go through the um, just play these wires here. Uh, we would go down to the Pacific eventually. We'd probably have to stop for fuel first. And that's def looks like rain out there. Let's see, are we on the right path? Nope, we got to go right through that. Oh, the airport's right in there. One of the art shows I did was down here somewhere. I distinctly remember that bridge, but I can't remember which side of the bridge I was on. So this bridge here probably determines the height of boats that could go further up, because that it's not a drawbridge and it's not very high, maybe 30, 40 feet. Probably the train that. bridge was even lower. Yeah, but the train bridge can, uh, is a drawbridge. That was a drawbridge. This this isn't and that isn't. The one that we just passed was a drawbridge on one side. This is a, uh, look at this, boat garages. I don't know, why bother? Kind of weird lighthouse down there, that's kind of weird too. So we're still listening to the tower frequency for pa uh, Tri-Cities Tower and there's nothing going on. Like, dead ski. There is a little bit of rain. I just turned on the radar on this. Uh, a little bit of rain ahead of us. Doesn't look too bad though. Go more that way. So we're gonna go across the top of Hanford. And Hanford is an interesting area because it has special airspace requirements. It says here on the chart, let me just get myself, oh, there's a runway right there for the airport. For reasons of national security, pilots are requested to avoid flight at or below 1,800 feet MSL in this area. So right now I'm at 900 feet, so before I get into that area, I'm going to have to climb to 1,800. Um, or I can go around the side of it.
So the way we're lined up, we can just go right next to the airspace and don't have to climb. It's not much in there anyway. Uh, it's a lot of uh, really barren desert. And then there are traces of where there used to be... Um, traces of where there used to be homes. You know what we'll do is we'll follow the river. That'll be good. Get back on the river. We've been flying for about an hour. I think we've got less than an hour left. Ground speed's 91 knots, so we got a little tiny bit of a headwind. So at this point, I think we must be in part three of the video, no? I think so. <laughs> I forgot to end part two. Part two's over. Now it's part three. <laughs> 